Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Nicole, your sweetheart of self-development, as previously dubbed from Women's Health. If you're new here, I talk about neuroscience and psychology. I distill some of the most complex topics and everyday topics that we all go through into actionable tools that you can take away and apply to your everyday life. I thought I'd kick off today with talking about breakups because it is one of the topics that I probably get asked the most about. And it's one of those topics that when I talk about, people always go, I feel seen and I now know what to do. Whenever I talk about breakups, it's a post that always does really well and it just shows that we're all in this together, right? We're all going through the same things and collectively we can all help each other. I'm not going through a breakup, but just so you know, <laughs> I've been there. Um, if you haven't liked, commented or subscribed to my channel yet, then please do so now. You'll really be helping me grow this channel. I want to be able to reach the masses my aim is to dilute some of the most common topics that we all go through on a daily basis into actionable tools that you can walk away from so you know what to do in every scenario. I'll start by talking about the neuroplasticity of a breakup. What does that mean? So our brains will create pathways based on our habits, actions, behaviors, thought processes, etc. Now, when we spend a significant amount of time with somebody else, our pathways tend to integrate with one another. Not physically, obviously, because we have a skull that separates us from us and the rest of the universe. But to a lot of the degree, these pathways have been ingrained according to what somebody else is doing. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't just make one coffee, you make two. When you walk out of the office, you call the person that you love the most. When you have good news, when you've got bad news, it's that person that comes to mind initially. And that can be one of the most taxing things for the brain when that person leaves our life. When you walk out of the office, your automatic processing says, call that person. And then you have to readjust and go, oh, wait, hang on, I don't do that anymore. And that loss is something we don't talk about enough. So obviously the breakup sucks, that person not being there, but the routines and the habits that we've now lost as well can also be quite painful for us. And I want you to know that your pain is very real, which brings me to my next point. Studies show that physical pain and emotional pain appear to activate same areas of the brain. And so thus the pain that you're experiencing is very real. There's one area of the brain that I'd like to talk about today, and that is the periaqueductal gray. The periaqueductal gray is situated in the midbrain and it's responsible for modulating nociception. Nociception meaning reception of pain signals. So what it does is it dampens those pain signals to make everything a little bit more bearable. It does that by releasing a neurochemical called norepinephrine. You probably would have heard of that. If you're in the UK, we call it noradrenaline and in the US, norepinephrine. I'm going to call it norepinephrine because noradrenaline doesn't actually roll off the tongue very well. So norepinephrine, noradrenaline, same chemical. When a person is going through an emotional breakup, rejection, heartbreak, etc., this periaqueductal gray becomes more active and it is responsible for dampening the pain of the emotions that you are feeling. But it's also responsible for dampening pain signals, physical pain signals, and that is why sometimes emotional pain can be so physically discomforting. Which brings me to my next point, and it's the reason why breakups can be so draining sometimes, because whilst norepinephrine is responsible for dampening pain signals, it is also responsible for your flight or fight system, for activating your brain to get you ready to engage in an argument or find a solution to something. Even exams, and we'll talk about norepinephrine in different contexts at another point, but what I want you to understand from this is that norepinephrine is responsible for making the brain, if you will, active. And it's the reason why breakups can be so emotionally draining sometimes because you've got this abundance of norepinephrine rushing through trying to dampen the pain signals but also keeping your mind active and sometimes even leading you down rumination which we will talk about in a lot more detail in a minute. This heightened abundance of norepinephrine can impact your cognitive resources so that you are essentially spending a lot of energy on this particular problem, which can leave you feeling drained. The way that I usually describe it is this mental currency, this availability of money or energy in our brains, if you will, and what are we spending it on? Now, when we're going through a breakup, we don't really get the choice in spending it on other things because relaxing can feel quite daunting. So you're giving a lot of this currency because your brain is essentially spending this mental currency on dampening the pain signals that you are very much feeling right now. Another thing that happens is that this abundance of norepinephrine can keep your mind active when you are trying to go to sleep. 
and this is why individuals that are going through breakups can often feel these sleep disturbances, inability to stay asleep, inability to sleep deep and thus not feel rested, which can then lead down a catastrophic sort of cascade of further problems because we all know that when we don't feel well we become even more irritable even more ruminative and it's kind of like a snowball effect of just negative feelings and emotions i'm here to help you today i'm going to give you by the end of this video all of the tools that you need to get through a breakup effectively and i promise you i've had so many people comment on my post saying oh my gosh since reading this post it has absolutely helped and so many people who message me out of the blue six months later being like i cannot believe that this helped so I'm here, I'm with you, we're in this together. Point number three, probably the most pertinent point that I'm about to make, and that is that when you're in a relationship, you have an abundance of neurochemicals, happy ones, sad ones, etc. no matter the relationship. We will get into relationships that have an attachment to trauma bonding, that'll be my next video, but stay with me for now, because regardless of whether you went through happy chemicals or unhappy chemicals, your brain will have given you a surge of a cocktail of chemicals that would have been present to you at any time you wanted by reaching out to this person that you love so much. Which is the reason why when you are going through a breakup, you are essentially going through a withdrawal period, predominantly with serotonin and dopamine. Now, dopamine is essentially a neurotransmitter that is responsible for putting you in motivation drive of wanting to pursue something. So it puts you in pursuit of a reward. We call it a reward-seeking behavior. So you know that feeling when you pick up your phone and you're just mindlessly scrolling and you do that every five, 10, 15 minutes for the sake of it? That's reward-seeking behavior. So neuroscientific studies show us that two areas of the brain responsible for this dopaminergic activity are active. The ventral tegmental area responsible for motivation and the nucleus accumbens responsible for craving appear to be more active during breakups. And this can manifest itself in the form of wanting to check up on your ex, craving that person, longing over them. And I'm not here to tell you that your brain is lying to you because that is absolutely a real feeling, but it does pass. And it can make those feelings of thinking that things were better than they were more highlighted, more present, if you will. And it lies to you in the sense that it tells you that you're craving this person despite a, B, C, D, despite what they did, despite what you did, you know, we can all take accountability for our own actions and relationships as well. So what this means is that we might find ourselves checking up on our ex. Now, all of a sudden, that becomes a repeated behavior as well. You are essentially dragging out the recovery process of this breakup by continuously checking up on them, by continuously listening to music that reminds you of them. Like continuously going through your photos and reminiscing over the good times. And now let me tell you, your brain will lie to you and make things look better than they actually were. And I'll tell you why in a minute. The second neurotransmitter that I spoke about is serotonin. Now, serotonin is important because it is responsible for modulating our behavior and our moods, etc. Not just alleviating it, but also making sure that we are essentially going through life in a happy flow ebbs and flows, right? Not peaks and troughs. The problem with serotonin is that when there is a reduction in it, we become more irritable, we start to have more ruminative thought, more obsessive thoughts, and quite dark thoughts. And this is why we can start to fixate on particular aspects of the breakup. That's because serotonin has been disrupted and that's the behavior that is normally accompanying this lower serotonergic activity. So here are the rewiring essentials, which are essentially a recap of what we've just spoken about. When we go through a breakup, we have not just lost the person, but we have also lost our habits, routines, and behaviors. The person that's integrated into our pathways has been removed and that can be just as taxing as losing that person too. Neuroscientific studies show that emotional pain and physical pain have the same effects on the brain. The periaqueductal gray is responsible for dampening the signal of pain in the brain and body and therefore can leave you feeling emotionally drained. When you're going through a breakup, your brain is going through withdrawals. The drop in dopamine will lead you to believe that you need to engage in reward-seeking behaviors such as checking up on your ex, the drop in serotonin, will contribute to low mood and also lead to obsessive thoughts, irritability, and negative thinking. I'm gonna give you three tools to help you get over a breakup much quicker. Tool number one is exercise. Now, 
exercise is going to tick a couple of boxes. Number one, it's going to help release dopamine, which is going to mitigate that effect of you wanting to check up on your ex. So exercise also releases endocannabinoids, which are natural painkillers. Endorphins come from the term endogenous morphine. So we have our own natural painkiller sitting within our body that we can access when we engage in exercise. Tool number two, emotional expression. Some of the greatest artists in the world have created from their pain. By engaging in emotional expression, we are alleviating the emotional friction and the burden that this feeling has on us. We are putting it out into the world so that we can stop carrying it within ourselves. Number three is engaging in hobbies and activities. When we engage in hobbies, something really magical happens in the brain. You completely take your mind off things. So when you go into a yoga class or jujitsu or you go to the gym, you don't really have the time to think about your breakup, right? That helps alleviate those stress signals in the brain. When we are still thinking about a problem or an issue in our life, our brain perceives that threat to still be present. And so the brain and body can't recover from the stress signals. But when you engage in something else where you are completely immersing yourself and your brain is not thinking about that problem at all, we come out of that situation with more clarity. We have re-engaged our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for logical thinking, so that all of a sudden the problems that you had in your mind are no longer as heavy loaded as they were before you went to that class. Your logical brain will help you to find better solutions and think more rationally about the situation at hand. So if you're going through a breakup, I want you to know that your pain is absolutely very real, that by understanding the neuroscience of what is going on in your brain, we can essentially fast track this process of recovery. You are in a lot more control than you think you are, I promise you. Instead of ruminating and thinking about what you could have done differently in your previous relationship, I want you to take that information to think about what you want for yourself in the future. So don't look back, I want you to look forward. You have the tools, you have the power, you have everything within you to be able to heal from this breakup a lot quicker and a lot better. Thank you so much for listening. And again, if you haven't liked, commented or subscribed, then please do so now so that we can help bring this channel to the masses. If you have any future topics that you would like me to cover, then please let me know in the comments.